Hi, this is Tom Chapin, and uh, we're going to have an upcoming show just outdoors. I uh, hope you watch it. It's going to be on loons. Pretty much everything you want to know about loons or didn't know about loons, you're going to learn on this show. we got Sherry Apps with us from uh, uh, Ely, Minnesota, and she's going to be covering just about everything that hopefully you want to know about uh, the loon that's on your lake and loons in general, and hope you watch. Thank you. Just Outdoors is brought to you in part by the following community supporters. Jervalin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervalin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervalin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Meds One Emergency Medical Services. Meds One provides mobile advanced life support, community paramedic primary care services, and education, event medical support, and consulting. Preserving lives and improving health. In an emergency, always call 911. This program is sponsored in part by Brood Awakenings Coffee House. Brood Awakenings is a green business with the mission to be a cafe where a person can eat every day and be healthy. Nurture your inner being at Brood Awakenings downtown Grand Rapids on Highway 2 East, across from the courthouse. My name is Tom Chapin and welcome to another edition of Just Outdoors for ICTV. Today we have a really special show. We're out in the field again and we're going to be talking to uh, the loon lady, Sherry Apps. Sherry is from Ely, Minnesota. She came down here to give us her expertise on loons. We're going to go out and look at the loons and we're going to try to give you all the information that she knows about loons in this next hour and there's a lot of information to look at. What I found out is most of the information I learned about loons was wrong. And so if you're really interested in learning the whole truth about loons, this is a show to watch. Sherry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Thanks Glad to coming. be here. Yes. Very exciting. Let's learn a little about Sherry Apps. Um, I'm a retired teacher and I moved to um, Ely, Minnesota and I'm pretty much working as an environmental educator and naturalist right now in the area. And I've been doing loon research with some of the experts. I'm not an expert myself, but I've been doing some loon research and volunteer work with some of the experts um, like David Evers of Maine and Jim Peruk of Northland College and uh, Kevin Kino of the USGS. Okay, but you've been doing this for a long time. You've yeah, been interested since in about for 1987. Long, 1987. So there's a lot yeah. of information you've developed. You've been out in the yes. field. Yeah, and reading been, the books. And reading the books, but you also are involved with the radioing of these loons. Yes, yes. I was able to go with Kevin Kino and his crew of USGS last year. And they. this was the first year that they put transmitters on juveniles. So they went at night and, and caught them um, and put transmitters in them and then they were able to see where those juveniles go for the first couple years of their life. So the increase in information is just a really uh, almost geometric, isn't it? Because right, right. With, yeah. with these transmitters, all the latest technology, yeah. we're learning more about loons than we ever have. Exactly. And, and, th yeah. th and David Evers started in 1986 and he's over his lifetime now, he's banned it over 5,000 loons. Wow. So wow. they do, this is yeah. the way, you know, we didn't know much about them before. The research was very minimal, but now they're just learning more and more. Yeah, and Minnesota, 
I mean, let's yes. see. Okay. Minnesota has. That's one of the reasons you're living here, right? Isn't it? One of the reasons I'm living here. Um, Minnesota has uh, 12,000 loons, give or take, you know, sure. some, but a very high population. Wisconsin has about 2,000, um, give or take a little Wisconsin bit. Wisconsin isn't anywhere near Minnesota. No, not And, no. and all the other states also that have loon populations. Right, right. And um, actually, in David's recent book, they are struggling with declining populations in Pennsylvania, Wyoming, and some places out west. Um, but but Minnesota seems pretty stable. Wisconsin's at 2,000. Um, Michigan is still struggling with only 600 to 800. Wow, loans. isn't that amazing? Yeah, that but, amazing? Um, but yeah. Canada still has a lot. Mm -hmm. And then Alaska, and of course there's five different species of loons. So we're mostly here in Minnesota working with the um, common the common loon, um, but occasionally we do get some other ones like the red-throated loon during migration times. We've sure. seen them. Sure. Okay. Well, um, you know, maybe we should talk a little bit since okay. we're sitting here before we go out on the lake, this okay. beautiful lake, okay. north of Grand Rapids. Right. We also we have some loons uh, located. Yep. We yep. have babies located. Yes, we do. And you could talk hours on just the relationship between the babies and the young. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, going to try to get all that information in here today. Yep. On that. And about their life cycles, the life cycles and their adaptations. The whole thing. They're an amazing animal. The animal. And, and, what, and everything they do out there, mm -hmm. what I've learned now from you, yeah. there's a meaning. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> so, it, it's survival, so yes. everything they do has a meaning because they've been able to survive. Yes, through. and also the calls. Right, right. We're going to try to get uh, our folks to understand the calls and what they mean. Right, And right. And we have all the calls recorded, yep. Yep. but we might even hear them out here. Yep, yep. And when we do, if we do, when we pull up on these uh, birds, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to identify that, what they mean. Hold on. Okay, right. the thing we want to talk about, though, is uh, right now mm -hmm. is the uh, environmental impact of humans the, on the loon and yeah. and boy this is huge yes and um, when you look at the mortality factors of loons and when they found injured and dead loons um, almost all of it is related to humans so um, the fact that there's more and more cabins means there's less and less habitat um, they have so to have habitat to build nests. Yep, they have and to, to have feel habitat. Secure. Yep, and okay. the habitat then protects the quality of the water as well. They need to have clean water. Clean water. V very clean water because they hunt by sight. Um, and pollutants, mercury builds up over time. So they don't die right away because of mercury poisoning, but many of the researchers are, are taking blood samples so that they can um, figure out how much contaminants and pollutants are in their bodies. They did that, um, they do that every year with different ones. And then, um, that, so the habitat definitely, the, um, the, the pollutants that that humans have put into fishing line tangled around loons. Seen that, yeah. And um, lead poisoning, lead sinkers, one lead sinker that's in a place where they need to get some pebbles because they have a crop inside their stomach like many birds For digestion. do. Yep. yep, and that crop, since they swallow the whole fish, um, uh, head first, they swallow the whole fish. They have to crush up all those bones and everything in there. And so they need little pebbles. Well, a lead sinker looks like a little pebble. So if they see a lead sinker, they're gonna try okay. to grab it. And they, if that lead sinker gets inside of them, they're dead within a week or so. Sure, how about um, motorboats? Motorboats are, are more, Huge are more dangerous for the chicks. So once they have chicks and they're trying to protect the chicks, that's when adults are hit by the motorboats or the jet skis. Um, also, the, the chicks can't dive and get away like the adults. How about when the eggs are in the, in the nest along um, the shore? Eggs, eggs in the nest, the, the parents are, once they get about, they used to think that they could nest around three or four years old, but now they're, the researchers think that they can nest closer to six years old. That's when they're really good at fishing and they can get enough food for the chicks and also they can protect the nest. Um, that is the only time they're on land 
is for copulation and then for nesting. And that's about 28 days, 27 to 30 days. And the nest is quite big. They're a big bird. The eggs are huge. You know, they're about that big. They're quite huge. They're uh, brownish, olive greenish um, with black speckles. So they're very camouflaged. That nest has to be six to eight inches usually. Sometimes they're farther away, but six to eight inches from the water line. So jet skis, motor boats, people changing the water level. That's all success. That nest is very success, success, mm -hmm. susceptible, yeah. susceptible to um, flooding. Lots yeah, of flooding. And this happens quite a lot. You've seen yeah. that. Yes, You've I've seen, seen three different yeah, nesting uh, Yeah, I've been uh, on occasions. little islands where they've nested on the um, leeward side of the island where there's not a lot of wind and they know that that's they're protected from the north wind and the west wind and um, great nesting but they were flooded out the first time or black flies the second time and then they uh, maybe tried the third time um, yeah. and some of them won't do that they'll only try once but the motorboats so, with these big waves yeah and big the bigger waves the motorboats yeah and that's, just inches from the water yeah. that can easily and yeah. also if canoeists and various boats get too close close because they're curious then an adult will stay they'll hunker down in a defensive posture I've seen them do that way down like that and they will stay there as long as they can but if people get too close um, they will um, dive into the water and their big feet can kick an egg right into the water and okay. then it's done that's done so flooding by by the waves or by someone getting too close and they will um, Two, usually one to two eggs, very rare to have three eggs. Sometimes it's just one, especially on a second nesting, if the first nest uh, failed. And on land, um, that's why they really prefer islands or very isolated lakes, because on land, skunks, um, raccoons, otter, otters, yeah. you know, um, uh, raccoons are, are bad, um, fox, anything yeah. that's, you know, yeah. um, an opportunistic feeder. How about the uh, eggs? If they have to, both eggs have to hatch within a certain amount of time. Yeah, Isn't within that one true? day. Usually, usually within 24 Otherwise, hours, they abandon it. So the the eggs are laid, um, and they usually hatch within one day of each other. That if they can, if they um, are in a pretty safe area with less people and less predators, then they can have that first baby kind of fall out of the nest and they go in the water right away, right away. With, they uh -huh. dry off within an hour they're bouncing like little corks in the water they can't dive real well but they can bounce under there a little bit and they have to kind of hang around there the other adult will come and protect them a lot um, while the other adult is sitting on the nest the the adults usually they both take turns on the nest um, the female sometimes does a little bit more but both of them do it pretty equally and they usually change every four to six hours um, okay. that's when they change right. and um, the the baby the second baby has to hatch within that first 24 hours sometimes 36 but right away um, and then if it doesn't then they assume something's wrong with the egg and they just leave because okay. they don't want to be around that area with an, an egg smelling right thing. but the main thing is they have to be able to feed that first one yep they start and feeding. They, yeah, yeah. They, that's a priority right that is a priority and okay. they start to feed them even with vegetation she which okay. I didn't know in the beginning. Um, when I first started volunteering, it was with David Evers and Jim Peruk when they were um, young 20-year-olds getting their PhD, yeah. and a bunch of us came up and did that kind of, you know, sta staring through a birding scope for yeah. four hours at a time, recording every single behavior that the loons did. Okay. Um, so they, yeah, they need to feed those babies right away. Okay. They start with little, tiny, yeah. small things. Their bill is very, has much dexterity, much dexterity, and um, they can feed tiny little macroinvertebrates like dragonfly larvae, little bits of uh, vegetation and things like that. Um, and then as they get older, that's how you can tell if a lake is a really, it's a good, loons are a good indicator species of how healthy, um, healthy the lake is. Yeah. Because the lake if, needs to have all variety of critters at all different levels and those different kinds of fish and all different sizes of fish. So that's a healthy lake and that's what the loons that's can live on because they have to feed them. It's probably going to be for fishermen out there. Yes, exactly. Fishermen, fishing too, yeah, right? That's right. If loons you have, have to fish. 
fish. The, yeah, there's exactly. Fish in there. That's right. If there's little Loons, fish, there's big fish. That's right, exactly, because they're each <laughs> okay. eating each other. Yeah. Okay, so. we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff here. Yes. Uh, uh, migration routes. We're going to be talking where they okay. where they where they land uh, in the mm -hmm. winter. Uh, okay. The adults leaving early before the young, and right. all this type of stuff, right. and right. the calls particularly, right. and and how they how they uh, uh, fly. Mm -hmm. And how they land on the water, right. and how long it. We're going to talk about all that. Okay. So why don't we go out and okay. take take a look at a family? Okay. It looks like when we were looking at these young mm -hmm. ones, they're about four weeks old, maybe. Yeah, we think about four, four weeks, weeks old. We'll, we'll be able to tell to, a little more yeah, when we get up their there. Their bill gets a little bit longer at four weeks, and they have kind of a disheveled, bad hair day kind of look, yeah. and they're losing some of their chick feathers and getting some other kind of feathers. Uh, they won't grow their flight feathers for another couple of weeks. Um, but that's one of the things the researchers check for too, to kind of see the Is there age. a time during the summer when the adults can't fly also? No, that is, for most waterfowl, they do shed their flight feathers a couple times a year, but not with loons. Loons only shed their flight feathers one time and that's during the winter. Amazing. When there's in when the there's winter. less predators around <laughs> and they don't have to fly or migrate, it's in the winter, usually around February. It can be anywhere from the end of January, and they're doing some calls right, right now. now. Yeah, they're doing some go. whale calls right now, a um, one to two note. Some people get it confused with a wolf call, and it usually means, I am here, where are you? The whale call, I'm, just a the small whale, whale. Call. Yeah, and they'll do that when we get notes. out there. Yeah, they've been doing it a little bit yeah. this morning already. And you'll tell I'm them here, again. you are there. You know, right. where are you? Okay. Kind of back and forth like that. And that's yeah. usually, and sometimes they will do that at night to actually um, hear who's on the other lakes because they, they kind of know who's in the neighboring lakes. So okay. they know if there's not any chicks in that lake a little bit to the north, I can go feed there on my break. So I can go over there and eat for a while. And so they will. So they do are that. kind of a territorial bird then. Yeah, they, they are a territorial bird, especially when they have chicks. Okay. Um, but when they don't have chicks, um, and the pressure is kind of off in the spring, especially. Um, that's when they're really pressured to find a territory and guard a territory and take care of the chicks. Oh. If they if they have a year off from having chicks or they've had unsuccessful nests, nests nesting, then they will kind of socialize with each other. So you'll see these little socializing groups. They'll do this bill dipping and circle dancing and kind of little hoots and stuff yeah. to each other. Okay. Uh, another question. There's there's other loons on the lake here. Yes, and there they are. don't have young. Right. There's groups right. of them. I right. think four or five we're probably also going to see. Okay. Uh, there's no young. They're just kind of together all the time. Okay. What's the story there compared to what we're seeing with the family? These here? could be three year olds that have come back. They stay on the ocean or Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan yeah. loons tend to go along the east, do the flyway down the Mississippi, and then they will sometimes stage in um, Kentucky or. Um, in Tennessee or different places like that. And then they, they if it's really clean water and enough food, they might spend part of the winter there. But um, usually they go on the uh, Atlantic coast. So North Carolina, there's a lot of them. Um, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and the Gulf. So they'll hang out in those areas all winter. Um, but if they, when they get to be, and then the young ones don't come back right away, they're the first year and the second year, they don't come back right away. Even up to four years, right? Um, yeah, they can. And they kind of hang out um, in, in the ocean areas. And then they will come, they start to come back three or four years old, but they're not ready to guard a territory. So these are some of the ones that you're seeing, the singles. They might be an older one that got kicked off his territory and is no longer strong enough to hold his territory. So he might be with them. A non-nesting. Um, yeah, non-nesting. Um, some of those non-nesting loons, adult loons. Um, the oldest one they've ever known is 27 years old. Wow. And the research is, I mean, just a couple years ago, the oldest one they knew was about 19 this years old. This is all that research Yeah, on, right. Yeah. Um, but now 27 years old yeah. is the oldest one that they that David Evers and his group out in Maine has has um, documented but they will come back um, yeah if they're three or four years old they'll start to come back but they're not strong enough to do a territory yet so they'll hang out and socialize they practice diving they practice fishing so that they it takes can them get a long real... time to learn how to feed doesn't it right it does I mean um, years yeah yeah before they can substantially raise 
a family. Yep, yep. So, they think closer to six years six old years, wow. before they can so do it. So some of these loos in this pack we're probably going to be looking at if we find right. them. Right. Um, are may, maybe the first year they're back here. It might be. Or, or back into Minnesota. Right, right. And and we don't really know some of this stuff unless we can prove it by the leg bands. Yeah. So that's why David Evers, Jim Peru, Kevin yeah. Kino, okay. all those guys um, um, that are working with this loon research, they they um, band them and they're certain color coded on which leg and that way they can tell with binoculars and birding scopes they can say oh yeah that was the same male coming back okay. or no it wasn't he moved to the next leg okay. or something like that they really are not david evers helped prove that in 1987 they're not married to each other they're married to the lake areas so within uh, 10 mile radius or you know um, 10, 10 to 40 mile radius of the lake areas that's really where they're married so to. loons don't necessarily let's get this out of the way right yeah away. right this is a myth that <laughs> everybody myth. gets blown away with yeah they, no they're not like geese they don't ha they don't mate for life um, and they don't come back to the same lake in and most they cases. don't necessarily come back it depends on who is stronger and can defend it it depends on of course who died and yeah. who didn't make it back um, sometimes they, they, they'll switch mates because it would be a different mate that maybe came back, you know, right away. Males usually come in first. Males do this reconnaissance in the spring. So as soon as those ice, the ice is off, like if they're coming up here to Grand Rapids area and they will fly over this lake and there's ice all over, they'll just go back to their staging lake and they'll hang out there. And they're not territorial in their staging area. But once that ice just starts to come, I've seen the ice only a fourth off the lake then they're starting yeah. to claim their territory already a lot of folks say well i've said we've had the same loons at the same nest for the last four years Probably not true. Probably not true. <laughs> Probably not true. In fact, and you can't years, prove, unless you have leg bands. If they have a birding scope yeah, and they can yeah. prove that the leg bands that that is but that's the only way. That the, particular. But that's the, the only they way. They just don't do that. No. They, no. Yeah, okay. Right, All right. right. Well, very good. Okay. Let's uh, let's go out and and okay. uh, take a look at some of the things we're talking about here. Okay. And good. as we are looking at the loons, we'll kind of come up with some questions. Sure. And uh, especially if they, we start hearing them. Right. And some right. of the movements they make. Right. And right. and try to get some more information in here. Yep. Uh, for the folks. Uh, okay. With some live action here. Okay. okay. Sounds okay. good. Very good. Okay, we're going to head out on the lake here, and we're going to try to find, well, we actually know where the family is. Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll spend some time with them first. Okay. And then that we'll probably uh, mosey around the lake and see if we can find a, a group of other loons. Okay. And sounds see if we can tell any difference in their maybe behavior or okay. something. Okay. You might be able to recognize that we don't. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And people can really help the loon um, situation by changing your tackle get rid of your lead stuff there's many um, places dnr and various places that will trade it in and trade it for t t titanium or something else that's not going to kill a loon that's if probably going to be the future it. huh yeah that's yeah. that's what they're start trying to start to do now keep track of your fishing line make sure you know that you're if you find fishing line you know stick it in your pocket make sure that that's not something they're going to get tangled up into um, or ingest um, and then, you know, keeping your, keeping the areas around your cabin as natural as possible. You know, you That's might be lucky, one, you might be lucky enough to have a loon, you know, like the little grassy area that you have near your dock. And if you can be really quiet during that nesting period, you could be one of those lucky people. And then, you know, in informing your neighbors, making sure if you want any more information, you know, go to the USGS Loon Monitoring Program. Um, and look on their website and see what their suggestions are. Also, Northland College at the Sig Olson Institute is a best way. They've got tons and tons of pages on their website to know how you can help loons um, so that we can keep this very iconic bird of the, of the Northland um, uh, healthy. It's, it's probably true that if you could have cabins ringing a lake, but if they had the, left the right habitat along yep. the shore, it would be yep. a loon city, wouldn't it? It would. Um, yeah. You, They know how to stay away from boats. If boats are going at a slower speed and respect them, if you and your neighbors and their visitors, um, you know, make sure that they're 
um, you know, being respectful of the birds and keeping a 200 feet distance and not bothering them, especially when they have chicks and they're trying to feed because, you know, we're watching them, but we're on vacation. The loons are never on vacation. Okay. They always, they need to preen every hour. They need to preen for a long time to make sure their oil is spread all over their body so that they stay waterproof so that they're not hypothermic. Um, and the chicks, they need to feed chicks, sometimes a hundred and the most I've seen um, was back in Sini Wildlife Center with David Evers and, and Jim Peruk and their crew. And yep, here we have the family right here on but, the left. But the, uh, yeah. The, the, and 148 times in, in four hours. I mean, 148 imagine, times they fed in four imagine hours. feeding your kids 148 times in, in four minutes. Those chicks have to grow. They cannot, um, really migrate until they are 12 weeks old. They have to be at least 12 weeks old. But loons have to really put a lot of energy and efficiency into the summer in order for them to get out of here by wintertime, right? Yes. And especially they have to feed those loons, they have to just right. stuff them because yep. otherwise a lot of loons don't make it, do they? Right there, one of one of the adults has do dove down. Now both of them have dove down. They're not showing any defensive behavior right now. Okay, so, so that's a good sign. Um, oh, I see the the chick is diving. Okay, there you go. Yep, the chicks are starting to dive. They're all gone. They're all under now. They're all under now. So they're checking out. I, they're probably checking out. You know, are we going to be safe? Okay, there's one coming up. There's a a couple of the chicks coming up, and I saw something splash. I think they had. I think they had a little fish. Both the chicks are together, and one of them caught a little fish. So you see, already at four weeks old, now this is a lot like the, your kids at home. There's a, there's a stretch, a little bit of a wing stretch. Um, the kids at home, you know, your kids, your adult, yeah. or your human kids sure. at home, they keep begging for stuff, even when they can do stuff themselves. That's the way the, these loon chicks are. Even when they're, you know, 10 weeks old, they're still pecking at the adult's face mm -hmm. and at the adult's body. When they peck around the face and the beak and the neck, that means I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So then the, then they're gonna, you see the um, chicks have a, a very white belly that keeps them camouflaged from the big predators underneath, like slapping, snapping well, that's the turtles reason for the in white northern. Belly. That's the reason for the white belly. And the dark on the top, the dark camouflage on the top, that helps them blend in to the dark water of the of okay. the lakes. So well, that helps them a we'll lot. Get up here a little ways and let the wind play Okay, for there's us an adult different. coming in right now, and she's got something in her mouth, I think. Okay, and she just fed a chick. Um, so they're at a, if they could be at a feeding time right now, they will keep feeding these chicks and feeding these chicks until these chicks are full and no longer, and then the adult will eat that last one or and whatever. And that could last for hours, right? And it could last for hours. It, it depends on how hungry the chicks are. They grow really fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, we'll just, a, we don't want to get too close, but we'll get close enough where we yeah. can get some, uh, and, and they aren't, uh, they aren't, don't look any fearful of, of, no, of us here. No, if they started doing a tremolo call, if okay. they started doing a tremolo call, then that would, that would mean that we're too I'm close. Okay. I'm going to get up here farther so we can drift in there. Yeah, and get and, the uh, camera yeah, they, so that uh, you can see better. On this yeah. particular lake, they, they're, they're very used to boats around right. and, uh, yeah. Closer. Yeah, and if you if you see somebody that's harassing a loon, you definitely should um, turn them in and go talk to them so that they become more educated about it. Sure. Um, obviously, the adults. We have only one adult. Here we go. Now, what's okay, that? Okay, that is a that is a whale call. And that, that has nothing call. to do with necessarily uh, safety or anything, does it? Um, not or usually. Not usually, but she might be. Um, and, and I cannot tell the difference between the male and the female. They look exactly alike. One, one could be older or younger than the other. One could be bigger or, mm -hmm. or smaller than the other. That is not, I mean, usually the females are smaller, but if you have a young male, he might be a little smaller than an older female. Um, they so think there's only one way to tell, and that's the, 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 the uh, right, yoder, right? There's only one way to tell, and that is when they're side by side and you hear a yodel call. The yodel is only done by the male. 
and it usually he has to hunker way down and throw his throat out close to the water and so that, that is uh -huh, a, uh -huh, yep, uh -huh. that's, yeah, that's really the wild it's the it's, wild wild call and so you know that's a male you know that that one's tell. the male but okay. now once they both died now you don't know anymore no, which no. one the male is <laughs> so okay. they both do the tremolo call which is an up and down melodical and that it can be you the male and the female male and female both do that and that's heard pretty regularly there's a foot waggle done by one of the um, babies. Tell uh, us about the foot waggle. Okay, the foot waggle is very, uh, oh, very fun. Again. Oh, there's both, there's both adults now. See, one has got something in their mouth, and, and they're going to be over. feeding a chick. Going to feed them right there. Right. They'll feed them right, right there. Right there. Yep. Yep. Okay, and they they usually go, um, you know, sideways. The the. The, the fish or whatever it sideways. is, and sometimes they fit, feed crayfish too, although they're not as nutrient filling as a fish. So fish is, is the best um, to feed your chicks, but they'll do it horizontally, and then the chick has to take it head first. So they have to kind of move it around so the chick, and when they get older and they want their chicks to, to, to do a better job of, of start to hunt on their own, they will take, I've seen them take a fish, bring it close to the chick and slap that fish on the water really hard um, so that it stuns the fish. Oh. And then that um, younger, that chick, which is a little bit older of a chick, will is supposed to grab that fish. And I've seen that fish wake up and start to go away and the adult <laughs> has to grab it again, slap it hard on the, uh, to try to get those, Try to get that aggressive part of fi of hunting, you know, and fishing yes. into the They're into teaching the them all chip. kinds of right. methods in order to survive. That's what this is all yep. about. Yep, that's because right. Because the chances of survival of these chicks is, is pretty... Very, it's almost less than 50%. Less than, but yeah. for them, from this yeah. stage we're looking at, yeah. Sherry, they have to a, get to Florida or North Carolina, yeah. it's about 50%. Yeah, yeah. And that's um, predators on the way down. Yep, predators uh, when they're... Starvation, uh, starvation. Yep, not enough food, landing on the wrong lake, uh, landing on a road instead because they cannot walk on land at all. They've evolved so their feet are way at the back. Um, you know, geese, the feet are right in yeah. the middle of the body, but, but loons, the feet are way, way in the back of the body. And so they cannot walk on land at all. So um, uh, uh, when they land on other than water, and water is a long ways away, mm -hmm. either a storm or some reason. Right, or icing, their wings icing, got all iced uh, up. They're, they're not going to survive, are they? Nope, they're not going to survive. That's when you need to... Um, you know, get some people that know what they're doing, your DNR or your local uh, retired um, <laughs> retired folks like right yourself, right. Tom, that know how to do it or have been trained and they take a towel mm -hmm. and they um, pick them up. Be careful of the bill. Absolutely. You know, please let someone who knows what they're doing because yeah. that bill Dangerous. is very sharp. It is a weapon. And yep, there's an adult again. She's kind of, or she or he, I don't know. Now I imagine that the it's adult might have a fish. Is that, can you tell? Um, I can't, or, no, no, I don't think she yet. does. Because okay. if they have a fish, those babies Ooh, will come right over there. to them really fast. But I'll bet you the next one that comes up, the male or female, yeah. will probably have Yeah. A she fish. might just be keeping an eye on us. She or he might be, one adult is keeping an eye on us. Now those those babies are pretty. They, they could be up to five weeks old, couldn't they? They Sherry? could almost be. Let's take a look at their bill once. Their beak. Yeah, they might be almost five. They've got a little bit longer of a beak now. You can see they're half or over half uh, the size. Um, there, there goes now. Yeah, now, now that, she's that, going down. Now she's going watch up for, what down they for a might do. They might dive down and try to follow her, or they might just peer where they stick their head underneath. If they stick their head underneath, they are looking for where she's going to come up, oh, or where the adult's going to come there. up. There she or is again. It, yeah, I, and nothing in nothing the bill, in the bill right now. yet. Okay. Now where is the other loon? Well, uh, if they feel safe enough, they m he might be on break. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so the other adult, if this is the one that's going to be watching them for four to six hours, the other one might be on break. This is where they might socialize with another group of loons okay. or where they might um, go to another lake and fish. Um, 
So it depends. But right. if this one calls, then that other one will come back. Will come back. Yeah. And what so, type of call? Um, it could, if it was a tremolo call, that means danger, danger, then they'll come back. The tremolo um, call means danger. So if danger. this is a female and she does a tremolo, the other one will probably come over. Okay. If he's pretty close. If this is a male and he does a yodel, then the female will come over. Um, but so, those, the other calls, the whale call is just, uh, I am here, where are you? They do this to their neighbors. They do this to each other. This is kind of a slow up and down call. Yeah, it's just yeah, okay. one or two notes. So we know three calls so far. Yeah, the other call is, the, the last call is a hoot. Um, and that is a very soft call. You need to be like 10 feet that close four to calls? Five, four different calls four different there's calls. made really four different calls i have heard one other call and that is the the mew and that is only done by the male when he is trying to coax the female over to a nesting area um, to copulate and start building now, there, a, now that's the whale call that's the whale yep one to it's two notes real quick she's just keeping an eye on us she wants to make sure we're Okay. Not going to hurt. Those two chicks are staying close to each other. The other thing I want to say about the tremolo, Tom, is that the tremolo call is the only one done in flight. There's a slight variation of the tremolo call. So if there was a loon coming over the top of this lake, it would do a tremolo call, and that means, can I land here? If the male does a yodel, that means no way. You cannot land here. I have chicks. This is my territory. Then that loon will not waste all the energy that it takes to land because they have That's very, most birds have hollow bones. Loons have very heavy bones. Now there's another adult way over there by that dock um, uh, to the right side of the blue dock. And I don't know. It looks like they had, is he preening or? Sherry, tell us about the tremolo call oh, there, again. There's a fish in the bill, so okay. he's there's he's trying to the he's, adult is trying to get the fish. One time I saw an, an adult struggle with a fish for like ten minutes. Wow. They have to get it head first. Oh, now both the, adults are over there. Both adults are over there. They're, 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 they're playing with the fish over there. Yeah. And, and it might be that it's too big for the chicks and they're going to swallow it themselves. It might be that they're not quite sure what's going on there. Okay. And I don't claim to know everything. <laughs> I mean, definitely, if people are interested in this, I would go to the USGS. Yeah, sure. Um, website, I would go to the Northland College Sig Olson Loon Watch mm -hmm. website. You can get lots of information there and you can help monitor loons in mm -hmm. Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, wherever you live. Now there, there's quite a distance between the adults and the, yeah. and the young there. Yeah, and that the is a big fish. That's a big ol. Oh, that is a big him. fish. Now they have a very elastic throat, so if this is a fish, that they are gonna, they do not rip it. You know how eagles rip it in pieces? Yes. The, um, yeah, you've got the, on the left-hand side, you've got both chicks. They might be full, but if they hurry over to the adults, then they're gonna well, try to feed. I can still see the one wrestling with the fish there. Yeah, one is wrestling with that big fish. No, yep, you can see he's he may twisting have its neck. It already, but he's trying to, and actually, um, adults, when they're not feeding chicks, um, if they're not during a, during a yes. chick feeding time they're and they're just them. fishing on their own, they will swallow under the water. Okay. Most of the time, unless it's a really, really big fish like this one, um, <laughs> they will swallow it under the water. That I way see. there's less seagulls, less gulls coming around, less herring gulls and ringbill gulls and stuff that are going to take I mean, an opportunity. Still He's still... Uh, yeah, I've seen him do that for like 10 uh, minutes, trying to get... They have a very elastic throat, so even a very big fish can go down the throat, but this is... They cannot rip it in pieces and feed the babies. They have to feed smaller fish to the babies. Type, yeah. Yep, minnows, and, and, then, mm -hmm. and then starting to be little sunfish and little crappies, yeah. and they just keep going. I would think the babies would be... The young would be interested in going over there, but yeah. obviously they aren't. The, yeah. One baby is peering right now, looking under the water. Okay. There, now did they swallow it? I think that, is that adult done with that fish now? Could be, yeah. When they shake their head like that, when they shake their bill and the water squirt, that usually means I just finished something. Okay. okay. Just like the <laughs> that wing. I did not know. The wing stretch, when <laughs> yes. they do a wing stretch. Yeah, what does that mean? The wing stretch means I'm done preening. 
I'm so done preening. I'm done preening. Oh. I, I've done, I went to the back near my tail and took that oil and I rubbed it all over my feathers. And those feathers have little barbs. They've got to get all those feathers re rearranged just perfectly so that they can function correctly. How so about they have the, when to the head goes of, back on the neck? That, oh, because they can't reach, they can't, with their bill, they can't reach behind their head. So what they do is they put the, they put the oil, the special oil from their oil gland all over their feathers. And when they have everything done, their wings and their belly, they turn way over on the side. That's a great time to look for leg bands. So okay. you could report that to the USGS or Northland College. Um, when they uh, roll on their belly, when they have everything all done as best as they can, their back, their feathers, their belly, then what they do is um, they do their head one of the last things they do is their head. So they have oil already on their back and they throw that beak and that head way back and they rub their head back there, trying to get as much oil on their head now oh, to make it waterproof sure, as well. Sure, that's the last place that they yeah. oil up, huh? Right. Okay. And of course, that's not the oil that we make. No. So no. <laughs> it's the right kind of oil yes, that works yes, for them. Yeah, loon oil. <laughs> yeah, right. But they have to have that, like unlike right. some other birds. Yes, they have yeah. to have, yeah. Um, uh, you mentioned earlier, and okay. we want to go back to that a minute, is the tremolo call right and you said it's the tremolo call is only done in the air or um no it's no? um it is the only it is the tremolo call can be done on water or air but it is the only call done in the air yes so I see. it can be done on the water like these guys if we got too close oh now both adults are there too but you can see one adult is staying closer to the chicks you can tell I have a little bit of a learning disability, ADHD or something, <laughs> because I keep going back and forth, but we're trying to name the behaviors as they're doing them. Um, but one adult tends to be a little bit closer to the chicks right now. The other adult's a little well, farther away. But yes, the tremolo bit. is the only one they do in flight. They can never do a yodel in flight. They don't do a hoot in flight. They don't do a whale Just in the flight. Tremolo. It's only the tremolo, and it's a little bit of a variation. And if it's a yodel, then it's a male. Then it's a male. And they used to think that the, the you know, like whales have a signature and dolphins have a signature um, kind of um, song or call. They used to think that the, that the loons had a, that the yodel was a signature call but they now they don't think that okay. so they're not sure i mean the research is constantly changing you know and learning new things about them so the so, only way you can tell a male is if it's yodeling on the water right that's the only time you you're can not going to hear yodel is because they don't no, yodel they don't yodel in the air and you, most all of these sounds are not done in the winter it's it's they do it a little bit but not much mostly it's the summer when all these four calls well, are I hear done. folks that are down in florida they see a lot yeah. of loons and yeah in, in right and they don't even look like the same bird people who don't because their winter plumage is totally different yeah so, so you'll winter, start seeing that in the fall here right we start to see they start to lose their summer breeding plumage this beautiful contrast of white and black they you lose that they're now both the adults are peering right now they're looking you know, looking for looking fish in underneath. The water. Okay, and uh, the adult loon usually eats about two pounds of fish a day. Two pounds. Two pounds of fish a day, and I don't know what it is for the chicks. So they have to be on a healthy lake. They have to be on a healthy. Yeah, two pounds of fish a day. Yeah. That's although I kind of would like to do that too, but well, two well, pounds of fish a well, day. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, how much do they weigh? They can the um, the other loon species the. Um, um, there are, I think the biggest loon species is the yellow-billed loon. Um, and there's the Arctic loon, the Pacific loon, and the red-throated loon. So those are the other four mm -hmm. species. I think the yellow-billed loon, and you can look it up in, yeah. in the books and on the website, the yellow-billed loon I think is the biggest. The Arctic loon and Pacific loon I think are a little bit um, But our loon here, common loon if you the see The common loon, what are they, what are they weigh it about? can be any way, anywhere pounds? around the eight pounds as an adult all the way up to 13. Really? Some of the males can That's be as much bird. as 13, yeah. Because eagles don't weigh them. Now the, now the chicks are kind of coming this way they might be Whoa. yeah they might be and you can see again they're a little uh, bit of white or they could be just interested in there yeah. now one is going does is there an adult that has something nope okay um yeah so it can be anywhere from like eight pounds to what this is what they have just found out in david ever's 
uh, recent book with his wife, Kate, um, they have just found out that um, the longer the migration, the, I think it's the less weight it is. The long, so loons like in Maine that just go to the coast of Maine? Yes. You know, they're, they're bigger. They're the common loon, they're okay. a bigger. Oops. Now I can hear, I can hear okay. some noise there. Yep, she's got a fish okay, and she's about to feed a chick. And now here's another really here interesting thing, Tom. Is she, Whoop, she here is, goes. she or he, she's doing yeah. a little bit of a hoot call there. There's a, there's gonna there's be fed fish. right there, right? And that, whatever chick gets it, it's who's ever strongest gets it first. She does not say, look, your brother already yeah. had one, so <laughs> it's, you know, or you already had one, It's so there's one chick got it. I heard the little chirping, that's yeah. the adults. Yeah, yeah, it did a little, like, here's a fish, come on over, get it. Oh. But they don't, you know, like we do with our kids, your big brother's already had enough helpings yeah. of that yeah. steak or whatever, we need to, we need to have your, they well, don't do that. in nature, the most aggressive it's one who, survives, so it's, that's Now, what if this is. is a good, healthy lake, sure. you can easily have enough food for both chicks. But if it's, you know, if there's less, if, if a parent is injured or there's not enough. There's another one. Yep, you there's another, another one. one. Look at how fast they're bringing those fish over. And we don't know, is that the same bird or are they taking turns, the adults? You, you really we'd have can't to tell. See, <laughs> we'd have to look around here and see if the adult is fishing yeah, somewhere yeah. else. But um, she will not do your turn and then your brother's turn or your turn and then your sister's turn. Um, just whoever comes first. Mm -hmm. So if there's not enough food, one chick will get bigger and bigger and bigger and the other chick will die. So that's okay. the nature, that's yes. the... And of course... That's just one more type of mortality. Right, it's another... Associated with loons as they're growing up. Right, as they're growing up. But there is, uh, their first, if they can make it through the first one or two years, then they have a pretty good chance, mm -hmm. you know, ex in nature, um, except for whatever humans do. One of the most amazing things you told me was when they do get to Florida or North Carolina, mm -hmm. the ocean, that's salt water. That is salt tell, water. Tell us about that. Yes, the it's salt amazing. water is amazing. They're one of the few um, animals that can do fresh water and salt water. And how they do it, and David has this in his most recent book, um, is they have a special glands in their nasal cavities and they actually expel the salt water. They squirt the salt water out, the extra salt water. Um, kind of like the sea turtles can do something similar to that. So they're um, a freshwater bird, but they can adapt yep. to salt water. Yep. And they have to adapt to that salt water for a long time yeah. as they're young, three to four years, that's where they're living. Yep, that's where they're living. And then when they go back and forth, they have to do it every year. And yes. actually they spend almost as much time on the ocean as they do here. You sure. think they're here, May, June, July, August, September, maybe uh, for a the little adults. bit of October. Yeah, so they're, they're spending a half of their time on the ocean and a half of their time here. Okay, the next thing, Sherry, it's yes. the, the adults always leave earlier than the young. Yes, and this... And that's a long time, like a month even. Yep, yep, they can, Two adults months. can leave. If those chicks are big and doing pretty well, some adults will leave as early as August, the end of August. End of August and then beginning of September. And the young um, will stay till November. And the them, young will stay for at least another month or two. So, yeah, sometimes till almost November. Now, if the ice comes in too fast, the, and the, and the chick hasn't had enough time to get its flight feathers and to really practice flying, then you know their their meat for the for More the eagles. mortality for the yep, eagles. Yep, it's okay. another. And um, eagles are a predator. On eagles these. are the biggest predator they have. She did she just bring something else up there. I think I did see a chick just shake his head like he just ate something. So, and again, I'm use, I'm loosely using these pronouns, he and she, we yes, don't know. Right. In fact, yeah. the researchers that I was with, Kevin Kino and his group um, of USGS uh, last year when, when they allowed me to sit on the boat with them when they were capturing um, a, a juveniles, they were looking for big healthy juveniles because the chick, oh, both adults are there now. One might have, and sometimes they both feed at the same time. Oh, there's a fish in the mouth. And there's a chick taking the fish. Head first, always head first. So they're using that bill and they move it around to make it easier for the chick. They, and they, then the chick has to take it. They take it in sideways, the, yeah, the well, adult. And, 
Right. And then they turn it. And then they have to turn it. Turn so it's, it's yeah. And you know, those dorsal fins on the fish can be pretty pokey. Well, you don't want that going backward. down the wrong way. <laughs> so. Okay. Be like a bad chicken bone, right? Right. Okay. That was a whale call. And that whale call is, te again, telling us what, what, what are they doing with the whale call? Well, just concern. Is it yeah, concern? Yeah, I think um, usually that's not a defensive call. Usually it's just, okay, I'm here, I'm feeding the chicks. Uh huh. You know, we're. Nothing to be real concerned about. No, no. But, but if, when they start flopping around in there and their wings are going, they do the, yeah. uh, what's, what's the call they do? It's that's, the penguin dance. Yes, and what call do they up, use there? Um, that would be a yodel, yodel by the male and a tremolo by the female. And that means you are way too close. There is danger, and if they if they do that for very long, it they they can be exhausted and die. So you never ever want to be okay. close enough where they're doing a tremolo or a yodel call, because okay. those are both danger, danger. Well, there's another fish. Okay. Just fit yeah. Look at wow, you've up. had some great viewing here of them feeding these chicks, and you can see they get. Um, Oh, now look at it. You can see the fish in the mouth yeah. and it's... Okay, now that one chick, th did you hear that little hoot? Yes. Okay. That one chick, okay, now she's going back and forth between... The two. Both the chicks and they will stop eating. When their bellies are full for now, they will stop eating and then the adults can start feeding yeah. themselves. You know, it's not a, a generally a bad idea to think that there's minnows here. Uh -huh. And it probably wouldn't be a too bad a place to fish for maybe even northern pike out, out sure. around this area. Sure. Sure. Wherever you see loons, there's going to be some sort of a forage fish. Right, right, So there definitely. must be other fish. Yep. <laughs> okay. All and right. you can see when they go down, they are so, they are not made to fly. They have heavy bones. They have, um, you know, a feet way in the back. They have wings that don't have a good wing load at all. Their wings are, are kind of narrow and short. They can only go about 75, occasionally 100 miles an hour, but mostly 75 is about the the, the most they've been able to go. And um, they, they just, they are built for water. Mm -hmm. They are built like a submarine. They're heavy, they're built for diving. Those feet are collapsible, so they can, very vascular and collapsible. And we were gonna say about the foot waggle, they can take that foot, they, the researchers believe that the foot is kinda like um, a radiator. It can, it can keep, it can keep um, the animal warmer, both adults and both chicks are there again. Um, they, if they take that big foot and they shake it in the water, or, you know, shake it in the water, shake it up in the See air. See that a lot, yes. They could, they could be doing a foot waggle like that. They could be um, shaking the water off and getting their blood through that vascular foot and cooling off. Or if they take that foot out of the cold water and tuck it under their wing, that's warming up the blood. So they think that this is their guess so far for the, the researchers that um, it, it's a way to warm the blood or cool the blood. Those, those, those big vascular, I imagine that dinosaurs may have had, you Something know, like that, some sure. skin like that, like the stegosaurus on, the, on their plates yeah. on the back, or elephant ears. Elephants sure. do that with their sure. ears. Beavers do that with their tail. This is an can, old bird. This is, the, the, this is a very, you're right, It's Tom, the first book is, you find in the, in the yep. usually in a bird book, so yep. historically they, they are. They are, a, they're one of the oldest birds, right? Mm -hmm. And they're related more to the grebe family, not really the duck family. Okay. And here we are with a drizzle, but you know, that's just the way it is here in, in loon country. And they don't care about the rain at all. Mm -hmm. So they, some of my best loon watching has been in, mm -hmm. in rainy weather. So. Okay. Well, I've got I've got more questions as okay. we go on. We're gonna we got a probably a little while longer here. Okay. Uh, I think we'll. Oh. There's a, a wing stretch, and that wing could stretch. just be. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that was neat. And a little tail waggle. Okay. And the wing stretch. Okay. Uh, that's pre. That's after the preening, right? Yes. They okay. usually do the wing stretch. But and how about the wing where been, the wing goes out on one side? And they're flapping. And they're flapping. Um, that one I'm not sure about. We'll have to Because we look. see that quite often. Yeah, where they're flapping just yeah. one side. Um, yeah. 
usually it might be part of the preening. Sometimes when they look like they're just possessed and they're yes. just flapping just all, over all over and splashing place. and they're on their side and their belly and their legs are kicking up and that's usually part of the preening process. And you've also seen them where they, they, they're diving up and down and up and down. Uh huh. That, is that a preening process too? Um, it could be. It could be close to, yeah, it could be something, usually when there's a lot of activity like that, especially if they're doing it by themselves and it's not with other loons. Mm -hmm. The socializing, when they start to migrate, they start to get in group, socializing groups. And that's when they're build, synchronized build dipping together, kind of yes. like circle dancing where they're all diving together. And then they come up and then they dive again. And it's all like synchronized planning. But they definitely are used to you guys because we have not heard a tremolo call or a yodel call yet. And no, we, they're, they're we want to move away if that... Uh, the people on this particular lake are very good with the loons. They yeah. all appreciate them. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they know how to stay away. Uh, right. and, they, and the motorboats, uh, they, they really... Uh, yeah. appreciate and take care of the loons here yeah and that's I think you find that on most lakes now right people are bird. getting a little bit more educated about yes how what a good indicator species this mm -hmm. animal for, for is a, for yeah. a good lake yeah for yeah, a good healthy. lake a good healthy you lake bet. with lots of yeah. variety of fish of all ages yeah. um, I don't know Tom if you wanted to talk a little bit about the red eye Apparently, the red eye is it's so signature, and actually, when they're young, they don't have a red eye. Like hawks, they have more of a yellowish eye when they're younger, and it isn't, I think, in about a year or something like that, then they get the red eye. Um, and, and then they're an adult. Um, and that is actually, there's something about the water that the, the, it, it does something with the red color so that they don't, they, fish and different animals can't see the eye it like so it helps them down there because they don't look they're more camouflaged with a red eye that's what go. I'm trying it's, to it's say a, it's they're more camouflaged with a red eye makes um, it more efficient in gathering food and more efficient and, and you see that on other fish even right right and they don't use their wings for steering or anything they are like a torpedo their wings are straight to the side all the legs they, huh yep it's all leg power they that's how they steer and that's how, how long they, can they stay under they can stay under, there's a, a fish right now in one of the adults. And did you hear the little hoot? Yes. So come here, I have a fish. Here, I'll yep. get it ready for you. Okay, and then if a chick is hungry, there they go. Um, the, um, they also have this torpedo thing where if the chicks were really tiny, if they were only a week old or a few days old, they can torpedo or, or um, submarine. They have a submarine ability. So they can just squish all the air uh, out of their feathers and they can go really, really low and give a chick a tiny, tiny thing to eat. And then uh, um, as they get older, they can be up higher. If they're doing a defensive posture, they could be way up high on the water. If they're looking, you know, like they're trying to look, they can throw their throat way, way up like that. Um, and how, so, how long can they, you think they can oh, stay under? Oh, they can stay under about three minutes. Three um, minutes. That's the most they stay under. And they actually do this anaerobic oxygen thing where they can recycle their oxygen. You know, we don't use all of our oxygen, we're expelling some, some of it, they can recycle that again. That's what, that's how they can, the that's three That's how they thing. can stay under for but like. But they can also come up and it looks yeah. like they're maybe under five or six minutes, but they just but put their beak they're out. they're fooling you. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Tom, for reminding me about that. They can come up if they feel like they're being chased or they're being harassed, they can dive down, they can go a hundred feet away and they can come up just by their nostrils, get a little bit of air and go back down again. Okay. So they've come up three or four times, but you never saw them. And then they're way on the other side of the lake. So that's when people feel, oh, they've disappeared. That's mm -hmm. what they've been doing. Wow. They can barely break the surface. They're so much like a submarine. Wow, this is um, just an amazing creature. Yeah, it Absolutely. really is an amazing yeah. creature. Yeah. I think, you know, the thing is, the more you learn about them, the, the appreciation just goes I, way And up. the more I learn about them, the more questions I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the well, loons that come back, like let's say you said there was a socializing yeah. flock they've been hanging. Are any of those chicks from the past? We don't well, know. Aren't we just in the, in the infant stages of, of learning yeah. about we a lot are. of things, but particularly these birds. Yes, yes, Because of we are. the uh, technology, the radios, and yep. you and have the to follow a bird to find out what they do. Yep, the transmitters that um, USGS has put in is right near the tail. There's a little antenna, and they have to try to recapture that bird in 
um, two years so that they can take that out so they don't have it. And also they put little geolocators on their um, on some of their um, leg bands. So they also want to recapture that in, in two years or so because that will give information like how far down they dove in Lake Michigan if they were there or Lake Superior or the ocean, how far down, you know, what kind of speeds they were going at and all kinds okay. of stuff. No, so when the e technology is, yeah. is really helping a lot of oh, this research. Gotta be. When yeah. an eagle comes over. Okay, yes. And what, what type of call? They definitely, the male will do the yodel Your, call, the tremolo, uh, and, yeah. and the female will do the tremolo call. But they can see these eagles a long ways away. Yeah. And they, they can distinguish, it seems, like an eagle from like a vulture or yeah. another bird that looks like an eagle. Right. And yeah. they, don't, they don't do the tremolo or nope. the yodel. Nope. A, a vulture or a great blue heron can come right over the top of a loon and some chicks, and they won't do anything. It's, they automatically know. Um, I sometimes in the trees I couldn't see an eagle but they could even an immature eagle they know and they will do that call and they will you know really try to yeah. protect um, those well there's a lot of eagles on this particular lake and it's it's amazing we haven't heard one yet because no. it's almost on a, on a half hour basis, basis so, where the eagles uh, come yeah. through I think yeah. what we'll do now we've learned a lot about this we photographed these mm -hmm. let's take a look and, it and looks look like around the lake and see yeah. if we can find um, uh, one another the, group of okay. loons. That sounds good. That All sounds right, really that's good. That's where we're heading. And it looks like one of the babies is just resting right now. Other baby might still be hungry. Sometimes they will peer underneath and look for an adult. Well, it looks like one passed the, the adult passed up one of the young right. and went to the other one. Yeah, so which it might is be one rare. is yeah one yeah. is full already. Sure. So. So they're digesting and they're probably feed again today, huh? Right, Peter, right, huh? right. So. There's, there's also one other thing that people <laughs> get, um, loon, adult loons have chased baby chicks, uh, um, duck chicks. Ch adult loons have chased um, uh, the chicks of ducks. Um, yes. Ducks, uh, baby ducklings. ducks. Yeah, ducklings away and, um, and actually even eaten them. Sure. So there are, you know, each each animal has yeah. its things that it does. Sure. To well, they're a big, strong bird. Yeah, they are. And, they're uh, a big. They can and take they on are a lot. predator for other things. Sure. So sure. Um, it's not we're not painting yeah. them as a total yeah. angel yeah. that never, yeah. you know. I mean, they are a meat eater, so yeah. they will also do that. Sure. Okay, let's go take a look. We'll just take her pretty slow. There's okay? the. Oh, you saw him. There's the whale call. She's starting. Now both adults are up because the okay, eagles are Okay, we just saw an there. eagle. Yep, couple we eagles. just saw two eagles. And uh, they aren't that far away from us here. Nope, they're just and, on the uh, other in fact, side. One landed in a tree. You might. And the e that, that loon picked that up. And what is that, a quarter mile? They were under, yeah, and they were underneath the surface. How'd they know those eagles were over there? They, both those adult loons were underneath the surface diving and fishing, and we saw those eagles, and right away those loons popped up and did a whale call. And if those eagles get closer, they're going to do something else. They'll do the tremolo yes. or the yodel or okay. both. Okay, so what we'll do, let, let's just, since we're out here, let's go take a look at the eagles. Okay. They. Um, also on the lake okay. is a roost for vultures. Oh, okay. And so there's a lot of vultures with the eagles. Yeah. And, and they, they don't they don't compete with each other. They're right. fine. Right. Um, One goes so after sometimes two. people will see what they think is an eagle. Right. It's actually a vulture. Right. And right. you can explain the difference. Yeah. There. One of the main differences. One of the main differences is the. Um, is the wings. The eagle almost always flies as, as straight. Wings are straight out. So, and they have big soaring wings. The vulture usually flies in a V, so that's how people can easily remember. In a V, and they kind of tip. They tip a lot like that. Mm -hmm. They kind of go, so, especially in the wind like today. So. But a vulture will fly over these loons. And they, and they don't they don't say a word. No, because the vultures yeah, get But dead they can meat. tell the difference between yep. that wing yep. angle. So. And you know, genetically maybe they've just been encoded with that yeah. instinct. Everything's connected. Yep. All right, let's just take a look down here and see uh, if we can find it. Is these. this kind of the biggest part of the lake here? Sort of the round um, and the other part is narrow? Or? Uh, the other part is, we've got another part about almost this size, but yeah. a little bit smaller. Yeah. And then yeah. a real narrow area, okay. and that's where those other loons will be. Okay, all right. So if we have time. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be okay. great. 
let's go take a look at the eagles. Yeah. They'll be sitting in a tree down here. The vulture roost here has probably been here for hundreds of years. Wow. And there's about 40 vultures that come in every night. Yeah. And during the day, there's none here. Right, right. They only they're all, they're roost out hunting. at night. Yep. And pretty soon, about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll then see them coming back in here. And eat. amongst the vultures, uh -huh. there will be eagles. Right, right. Yep. And of course, the vultures can't it. go in the water. They can't grasp anything. Right. And so they fish. Oh, there's an eagle right there on the top of the dead yes, stage. Oh, oh, there he goes. Going. He's flying. He's flying oh. over the top. And what we'd like to do, it's going to take us a little while, but we'll, we'll go by the eagle. Okay. Uh, and that's connected to the loons because the loons know where that eagle that, is. They're right one now. of the main predators. Yeah, they know where that eagle it, is. He might be landing over there at another. He, yep. He's going to. No. Uh, oh, yeah. There? Yeah. Oh, he landed in a dead oh, tree over there. Yeah, okay. so he's in a dead tree. You don't have okay, a. They're the, the loons are calling. Your loons saw that. Yeah. What is that? Uh, yeah. At least a quarter mile away, isn't it? Across here? I would I, say. Yeah, water yeah. is kind of hard to tell. Yeah, but, but they do need it. a quarter of a mile to get up. They're so heavy, the loons yes. are so heavy, they have to walk on the water a bunch. They're like and a then... flying penguin almost. <laughs> Is there another? Oh, oh yeah, there's a vulture. There's a vulture on the middle um, of the three birch. There's a vulture with a red head, a turkey yes, vulture. Yes, right up on top. Um, That's a vulture with a yep, red head sitting the, up there. Yep. And uh, for some reason, he's see? hanging around today. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they... Uh, yeah, he's hanging out. Now, that's rare for him to be here. Usually they're out hunting. Yeah. But uh, and eating dead carrion on yes, the side of yes, the road. Yes. Yes. So, so. car-killed animals. Yep. Go yeah. Not all to waste. They feed right. other critters. Yep. Yep. That's well, right. Well, there's that loon call again. Yep. Again, it, was felt, it sounded like a like a <laughs> whale call again. Yeah. We haven't heard the tremolo or the yodel yet. Well, let's uh, let's do what we said we were going to do. Okay. And we'll go over and see if we can get another shot of that eagle. We won't get too close. It's sitting in a tree. We're watching it right now. I'll get upwind from him or her. There's another one you can't tell. Yeah. Although the females are way Usually larger. Usually the couple females are much, than yeah, the, much than the bigger male. in the in and the And after you world. watch eagles for a while and they're and they're full with full white yeah. head, that you can tell the difference. That takes five years. Takes about five years, but you can tell the difference. Yeah. There's, there's quite a bit of, of volume difference between a male and a female. Yeah, yep, for eagles. So. Yeah, loons not so much, just a couple pounds maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, we'll, uh, we'll get real close so he flies, but we'll get probably within camera distance so you can kind of get a hold of him there. If he knows we're going the other way, he's probably going to sit there. And we want to just, since we're out here, let's go see if we can find those other loons. They're okay, on the lake. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, and I didn't know if you wanted to try to find the nest, too. So you We'd like to, yeah, and it's, where the nest is, there's no water. There's no okay. wind. Oh, there's no so wind. So we'll see okay. what we can do. I don't know if I want to get too much closer, but I'll just, I'll go this angle. You got him? No. Okay. We're, we're looking at the eagle that uh, was the origin, or started, the Stimulated the loons to right. call. To, right. Just a natural predator, and uh, they are uh, even as the young get full size, they're still calling loons. Yeah. I mean, they're still calling the eagle. Right, right, yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. Matter. Even when those, yeah, even yes. when those loons, those baby chicks are about the same size as an adult loon, um, if they see an eagle, they still make all kinds of noise and and. Uh, Closer for the danger. Go up here and then we'll, if we float down, it's a little less rocky. We'll get up here. Ah, a little rain Did, won't hurt us. No, uh-uh, I'm fine. I'm, oh I'm glad I put a couple of extra layers on. You never know in Minnesota if you should dress perfect. like winter or summer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this stuff, that's that. Yeah. I got a lot right, of that dry. dries off so yeah. quick. Dries, yeah, dries, yeah. Um, okay, I here, think the, the farthest down a loon has been recorded is 180 feet deep. 180 feet That's deep. That's amazing. They probably yeah. got that in the nets. Yeah. Uh, some nets. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a geolocator. Yeah. If they were able to get that yeah. off the leg, um, off the band, the leg band, then they were able to see how far deep. And a lot of that was in like Lake Superior or in the ocean. 
Now this uh, obviously is a mature. That's eagle. a mature. It's got to be at least five years old Before it has or a older. Head. Yep, or white head. Sometimes you'll yeah. see them with half a white yeah. head. Right, right, right. And then the adults, I mean the immatures that are less than five years old are, are just mottled kind of and, and big white armpits is yeah. usually the way you can tell those. But a lot that of folks is don't big... understand that. They don't see, they don't, they can't identify that as right. an eagle. They think that's all, all the white head. But right. the, the first five years, yeah. you're, you're confused. Right. A little. And we do have occasional golden eagles. Yeah. Now there's, there's something up in the sky too. That's that another is another, eagle. that is another eagle. See how flat the wings are right up above? So it's so. You're not going to get that one though. I'm pretty sure. It doesn't have the, yep, well, I think that's, that's the white tail, yep, yes. white tail and white head. One flying over. We have to listen for the loons and see if now they're the going to. The loon might, now this one's coming in to, he knows where the uh, other one is, he okay. sees it. Yeah, now they're talking to each other. Mm -hmm. This one is about that, uh, 100 the yards from call. the other one, flying around. Yeah. Okay, he's. It, I wonder if this is territorial now. See that eagle was circling and this other eagle that had already landed is like, no, stay out of here. I'm hunting here. This is my lake to hunt on. That's my guess of what just happened. Just my okay. guess. Yeah, it's going it's out of here. Okay, we're gonna... Because if it was an eagle that was a pair, they would have, you know, yeah. She wouldn't have said anything. She or he well, wouldn't have said we're anything. By the eagle, it's still taken. sitting there. We're just Lots gonna, of activity this morning. We're just going to head up. Gonna try. Okay, one more, one more shot. Should be able to get right up on that. Hmm. Right. Getting nervous. They start Turning moving their head. head, it seems yeah. like that. When they they're start ready to, moving their head. Ready to fly. Yeah. And uh, obviously it's been fed well enough today. It's relaxing. It's relaxing. <laughs> it's not hunting. Right. Right. Now she's calling. Yeah, you can hear it. Listen. Listen. Yeah. Sometimes if you get near shore, even when there's a wind, it's less windy. Yes, so. right, right. All right, we're going to head up to the other end, and it's going to be a little rougher going against the wind here, but coming back, it'll be beautiful. Right. Um, I'm sure, I'm guessing, Tom, that when those chicks were young, they did not bring the chicks over here on this side because the eagles are so prevalent on this side of the lake. So my guess is that when they were even younger, they made sure they kept them over these, there. These loons have it figured out. Yeah, okay, they well. figured out where the, yeah. the just. <laughs> the, the loons also have that nictitating membrane. So they have like automatic goggles. When they go under, that membrane comes over the top of their eyes to protect it, kind of like a beaver. So that's another adaptation they have that's pretty amazing. And this is a natural lake, not a man-made lake at all. all a thousand lakes in this county, wow. So the loons basically have a territory and kind of make sure they stay in that territory and protect that territory. So if they are going to visit with the other loons, they keep them kind of in a corner somewhere, in a, in a back bay or something like that they're going to be socializing unless they don't have chicks if they don't have chicks then they can socialize anywhere all over in the lake but once we get up here past this little point on the left I would suggest we start looking for the other group. okay okay not too far you're looking at the end of the lake way up yeah. there. and I wonder too I'm just thinking just here sure. you know with people coming and going if they feel comfortable they with do. that it might keep the eagles away with more people coming and in. And also, you're going to have less wind on the west side. Yep, and, and all, definitely less wind. They always try to bring those chicks the, to a less windy the nest area. Is over in that corner. Okay. We'll come back and take a look and at the take nest. Take a look on that side. Yeah, so far in the um, Lake County near Ely and St. Louis County near Ely, they're counting more chicks than they did last year. Because last year was a very late ice out. And that, well, that was um, the worst winter I think we yeah, I can remember. It was, was. Last year. 
Yeah. Or two years ago. Right. Yeah. It was really cold and long and no ice snow out we've ever late. had in a long time. They were coming onto the lakes really late. It was hard to quickly figure out a territory. And we then also, we also have an osprey up there. Oh, is that right? So. Oh, they're fun to watch too. Now they. I, I know an offspray nest on Tofty Lake off the Fernberg Trail and a loon nest, and they're pretty close to each other because there's no um, competition there. They both eat fish, but the offspray is not a predator to the loon, so that's no problem. They can be, their nest can be fairly close to each other, and they both can raise. Now we have sunshine instead of rain. Wait five minutes and it'll change again. <laughs> And it really is harder. You know, it's easier for loon monitoring volunteers to go out on calm days because you can see them better and spot them better. Okay, now this, this is where I suspect right from around here is where we saw them. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to be here. Okay. How many loons do you think you've pulled off the roads? People have called you and you About said, a dozen. About a dozen, a dozen wow. Over, yes. Over the years. And they would have died. Yeah, oh yeah, they would have died without you bringing them to the water. Yes. See, oh, oh yeah, there. there's one right ahead. Takes yep. a good cameraman to spot something like yep, that. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's one, but there's, uh, there's yeah. about five of them. And they may come and go to the lakes around. Well, right over the, within uh, 200 yards over here is a, a lake about five times this size. Oh, wow, okay. So. She's gonna pop up again around here. Pop up someplace. Would be fun to get one of their preening Yes. You know, to get some of their, and, yeah, yeah, and they're just doing all their cleaning. I think we'll uh, park right out here for just a minute. Sure. And you could do that. You can see. Notice it's calmer already less, back here. A little less waves. And get this last breeze up. There here. she is. Back there. We went right over the top. We went right over the top. Okay. So, down again. Down again. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, since we're here, we're all the way up. Let's just keep going. And we'll come back with the wind. That'll be a lot okay. simpler. We can float, if we see one, we can float right toward it. Yeah. Yeah, this goes way back. I could see them kind of going back here and socializing and it still being far away from the chicks. And I've seen them do that at Arrowhead Lake um, at the environmental camp that I work at. We just want to make they, one little loop up in here and come back. Then. Okay. Where they tuck the, they'll tuck the, uh, chicks into the lily pad somewhere and just yeah, cool. make them kind of stay there and then they go socialize for an hour and then they go back and call the chicks out and finish a feeding session or something this is where i we keep seeing the osprey right in here i don't know i don't see them today but is there a osprey nest then i don't know okay because they always nest in the dead trees yeah. as opposed to the eagle that nests in the live trees the eagles really like the white pine. I guess down near the Twin Cities, they like the cottonwood, cottonwood trees, but up here they like the white pine. And the offspray just needs something dead. Uh, I don't see anything up here. No, not yet. Nope, I can yeah. do a, yeah, just the one we went over. Now that one we went over, what's, it, what's the story on him? Oh, wait. Way out. Or is that just lily pads? Could be a lot of lily pads up there. Yeah, a lot of lily pads in the wind. They... Yes. There's a lot of pads up there. That's all lily pads. Yeah. I, yeah, you think you'd see one pop up in the middle here. That's where they yeah. fish. So this one lone lure. Right, in what? this corner. But the other ones could be fishing on another lake. Oh, wh wait, wait. What about that corner? Nope, those are lily pads again. Yep. Anything that looks like a dark head, it's the wind doing the lily pads. I see what you're looking at, though. 
Yeah. But I can see that this would be a good area. This is where they could socialize with another group, and there's probably fish yeah. in here. And the other ones can fish. we got water over the top. Yeah, here, right so. over the top, right. Okay. This will be a little better going with the wind. There's been three lakes um, so far reported with the Ely Field Naturalists where eggs have been abandoned. And unless you were there, you don't know why. Um, did the eggs sit uh, too long? Were the eggs, you know, was it past the 30 days and so the loons just gave up? Was there a predator that kept bothering them, whether it was people or something else? And so they kept getting off the nest and finally they just gave up? Was it a bad nesting area that wasn't concealed enough? You know, we don't know. Unless you were there, you don't know. But I found two abandoned eggs on Tofty Lake this year. Last year they had a chick. You know, or, or the loons that came there, we don't know if it was the same loons, but um, did have a chick, so it is a good lake for that. And there's other nesting areas there, um, but they didn't. Just don't know. Yeah, okay. just don't know. So and then happens. there were two other abandoned lakes. Abandoned eggs. Abandoned happen. eggs. And there is people, there, there is a, a volunteer or a staff member at USGS hmm. that would like to have those eggs because they would like to test it for contaminants. Is it possible that some of the loons that were in the Gulf, if they've got contaminants and they're now laying eggs, is the eggs becoming too, you know, mm -hmm. full of contaminants that that's why it didn't, you know, they There's could test There's got to be something for, major for them to abandon. It wouldn't be right, something small. Right, right. It either has to be predators or mm -hmm. that the egg was yeah. dead. Okay. It was unfertilized or it wasn't, or it was contaminated in some way. See, a little island like this, too, would be perfect for nesting. Um, maybe some other loons, maybe not this pair, but some other pairs may have nested in there. You, you got to have lots of those little weeds to camouflage it and enough like boggy mats. They love boggy mats because um, the water level, you know, can go up and down. But the bog, you know, the little boggy mat with some uh, tall grassy okay. vegetation sedges and stuff. So that's you're, you're saying that this is a good area. Oh, for that is a perfect right area. That is a perfect area. Um, for, they for like nesting. islands because you have less predators, um, and they would go on the side that doesn't have as much wind. That's where they would use it. Uh, many, many nests that I found when I do the thir the 14 lakes in Wisconsin in Oconto County. Wisconsin for the Loon Watch program out of Northland College. Many of those nests are on islands. All um, right, so uh, some of these loon nests that people build now, you can you can build your own loon, yes, loon nests. Yes, you can. This would be a good place to put them in this area. Right, if, if, right. But yeah. most you of, have so many natural areas here, here, they may not use it, but yeah. if you're on a lake with a lot of cabins and people um, have had loons but no nests, then yes, the artificial platforms are an idea. But they're also noticing that it's also like a dinner plate for the eagles. So you almost have to have another adaptation over the top, and you can look that up on the internet. There's a, there's a, because loons do not fly in and out of their nest, so they will be protected from an eagle if there's a little cover, a little camouflage cover, like a netting or something over the top. Then that nest will work out better. So they've made adjustments to that artificial oh, nest. Well, that's really interesting because I know a lot of folks that have those. Okay. They may not know that. They may not know that it's yeah. like a dinner plate for the eagles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now this one is a little island too. Yes. This one is a little island too. So it would also be another good nesting area. Seem to have less predators. And you know, even, less... even on the other side here along that shore, right. it was just really nice in there right. too. Yeah. And again, it depends. They don't like too many weeds, but just enough. Um, aquatic vegetation to camouflage the nest and less wind and sort of a deep area they can slip into. Yeah. But that is another island. So you have lots of areas. It's almost everything. Yeah, it's almost like you could you could yeah. have two families here. And it's 65 feet of water right out here too. Oh wow. So that helps the diversity of fish. That's a healthy habitat when it's very diverse. Well, we missed that one loon, I guess. Yeah. 
may have gone down. Lots of good habitat here. And one of the reasons is it's undeveloped. Undeveloped. Yes. Was protected and preserved as part of county, state, or federal land, national, nationally protected. Sometimes they'll change nesting because it's not the same loons. So they'll go to a different place. That's not a loon up. No. It looks kind of like a. No. Well. Uh... Yeah. It is a loon. It is a loon. That's it could a, be it could be resting. It is a loon. It could be sleeping. Yep, <laughs> sometimes this could be the one on break, you guys. This is a loon on break. <laughs> a loon on break. This okay, is a loon on not, break. Uh, whoop. Can't get that. Can you wanna... He's got nowhere to He t had tucked his tucking the head all the way around. They sleep on the water. What do we have very, here? Very common. What we have here is an adult loon that is on break from doing the chicks, probably. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe fed himself, did, or himself or herself. Um, done eating, done fishing, done diving, maybe done preening, done with the chicks. So taking a four hour break or a couple hour nap or something. They do sleep on the water. They never come up on land like ducks and geese do, and they'll just tuck their head way behind. I found one in a cove once, I think it was on Bass Lake or Boot Lake in Wisconsin, and I thought it was tangled, you know, that it was hurt or tangled or something, so I came up real real quietly in my kayak and then realized it was sleeping. So well, then this I looks went like it's uh, really a, in a rest position. A very rest, not yeah. bothered by the loud motor when we were coming yeah. in, so. And that brilliant black and white breeding plumage, they will start to lose that the end of, um, in September, mm -hmm. sometime in September when the leaves are starting to change. And they'll, it'll start at the bill and they'll just get that all gray. Um, and then the, the Even juveniles- Even the adults get all gray? Yep, all gray except for the white belly. So when they're on the ocean, they do not look like this at all. They look gray. They look like a completely different bird. So, they look like a gray cormorant almost. So up here, do the adult loons toward the end of the fall, yep. or the fall, do they turn the same color as the young? Yes. So then you can't tell the difference. At all. You can't tell the difference between the young and the adults. You'll see four of them together and they're all gray. Now are those four adults or was that two chicks and two? Yeah, you're right. Um, All right. So well. that's hard for people to know. They they look totally different than. Yeah, we're not so, probably not going to be able to get real close to that nest, but uh, I'll show you where I I know it is. Okay. Is it like tucked in that corner, or no, is it right, more? Right it's in this corner, so we right could almost edge, walk yeah. to it. Huh? Well, you, we could. We could. If it, wow, it was really camouflaged. We don't want to. Uh, he's he's going to have to move or something here. Sorry, guy. Because there's a little bit of land. Yeah. You can see how far back the feet are. Those red eyes, that long dagger of a beak, and the necklace. Um, they have not proven this yet at all, but some of the researchers think that maybe they can do what dolphins can do, where they shut off half their brain and sleep for a while, but they keep half their brain kind of open just in case of danger. Almost looks like this one. Yeah, like it's just kind of yeah, no partially, but totally, he, it just had its beak all the way around, tucked in the wing and sleeping like that. That's the way they sleep on the water. Sometimes in the winter, rafting up a bunch of them, they call them rafts, but, and unless we see a leg band, we don't really know. 
if it's the same bird that nested it last year. Right. Okay. So the nest there. was. Okay. Right oh yeah, there's kind of a hump of grass that's well, a little bit taller there. Well, it, they, they were swimming right. In and in, out of in there. there. Okay. No, I can't get oh, in there, but you you can walk right down yeah. there. You know, that's just yeah. see that hill. That's all yeah. high land. Yeah, that's land. So it's on that hill right there. Yes. That's where. And this is a perfect. It'd be bay. right below right. that pine tree there. Yeah, you know, right down. Okay, there. that's pretty. They must be really used to view for us to get to that close. Like It'd that. be really nice if they yeah. did a big wing spread right now or something like that. Oh, I know. Or a little bit of premium. But it's not even. It's not even concerned really. Well, it hasn't moved. It hasn't made a yodel or a tremolo sound, and it hasn't moved it's just away. It's so used to us. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So that means you have a lot of people that that um, respect them and keep a distance. And again, you never want people to go near the nest during that 28 days, during that 30 days, whatever. You know, people need to really stay away from a nesting area. That is so stressful for them to have to protect that chick. Um, you always wait until they've left the nest. Then it's okay to go look at the nest or see if the eggs were abandoned at all. Maybe one egg was abandoned. See if there's eggshells or anything like that. Sometimes researchers want to check that stuff for um, contaminants or mercury levels. Total sense, that'd be the perfect bait for. It was there. That's where they were. But they have so many choices. Yeah. I saw them bringing the little chicks out of there, yeah. right, right there. Just a small portion of the lake has any cabins. Yeah, I know. You can see most of it yeah. is natural. What is it like? Eighty percent? Oh, 90. 90 Ninety percent is all natural shoreline. See, and then the loons don't have to get so aggressive with each other. But when. 90% of the lake is developed and there's only 5 or 10% that as actual natural habitat, then it's very hard for them to find an area to nest and defend. So Tom, when the family's not hanging out in this little bay, where do they usually go? Turn in there. Around? Yeah, that's about it. Okay. See them now. No. Oh, there they, are. there they are. Kind of glide by them. Turn the motor off. And one of the adults is doing preening. Oh man, this one is what we need. We need the preening. preening. Look at Donna. You know, some of the families stay together and do everything together. When they eat, they all eat. When they rest, they all rest. When they preen, they all preen. There's a wing stretch. He must have just finished. Just finish some preening. I don't know if he'll do it again, but well, they, um, they and, do it. They do it a lot, so yeah. And then um, other families, they tend to, you know, one one adult takes care of it, and then the other adult gets a break. So the loon we saw sleeping in the other cove, that was a single, or somebody resting from another lake. No, she just fed that one, huh? I didn't sure, see look, it. Yeah, it, uh, the it looks baby like there's went one right over to the mother. Okay. Or the father, it's hard yeah, to see. Right. Yeah, until. Yeah, look at how healthy those chicks look right now. Their beaks are longer. Well, if we Yeah, get... there's one chick that's preening right now, too. And then there's one adult that's peering down under peering the. And look under, yeah. They're looking for bait, I suppose. Yeah, huh? looking for food. If it's time to feed again. They really hang on this shoreline right here. That's an island, uh, also. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, behind. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. I thought maybe they'd do a little dance here. They have been. Yeah. But there's, oh. or do, oh, there's no, one went under, one adult went something under. There. Probably come up with a, uh, this might be good. That one might come up with a minnow here and then the young ones will be heading over there. 
Let's see where he comes up. Yeah, if they're hungry, oh, they'll... Oh, no, there's the door. That one's still doing some preening. There's a foot waggle yep. from the other chick. <laughs> I saw that. I know. <laughs> Back in 87, they started to have us count those kinds of things. Yeah. How many foot waggles, how many <laughs> fish did they feed? Were they locomoting back and forth? Mm -hmm. Were they preening? Were they peering? Were they fishing? Were they, if they gave a call, what call was it? And this other one will probably pop up over here. Boy, they spend a lot of time under that water. Yes, they do. Swimming around under there. You know, and think they're really only on, if they do not nest, they're never on land. <laughs> and if they do nest, it's only those 25, 30 days, or 27, 30 days. Well, they feel pretty secure if it's yeah, that one's Yeah, that way one out just there. took off, so one's in charge of watching. Well, look at the baby roll over and you can see the white belly. <laughs> no, that one is preening now, this yeah. morning. Preening just means moving the feathers around and getting um, them in position. Cleaning, yeah, cleaning. and cleaning the feathers. Rearranging them so they're right, picking off the mites, if there's any mites or, anything like that on it, um, spreading the oil around, and getting them all... If they, I understand if the organized. adults don't have their feathers in their proper position, they aren't able to fly. That right, right. So that's one right. of the reasons. Right, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so you've got a, a chick preening there now. Where is the other chick? I don't... See the one trick. Yep, me too. Oh, there it is. It's up against the shoreline, so it's camouflaged. Yeah, it's pe it was peering in the water. Oh, there you got a. He got something to eat. Look at that little one flipping over there. <laughs> Looks like he's eating some vegetation or something. The one. Boy, that is camoed, yeah. Yep, it is camouflaged, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that really helps. Well, they're starting to become adults. They're uh, learning a lot here. They still heck can't feed themselves, is that correct? Um, not totally, no. They're no. supposed to start, they're supposed to start, you know, trying some of that, but no, they can't oh. feed themselves. Yeah, at, one at got four up. or five weeks. There's another foot waggle. Yeah. All right. Very interesting animal. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're definitely built for the water. Survival on the water. Almost like a fish with wings. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about loons, almost everything you want to know about loons. Uh, there's probably more information out there, but we covered it today. Um, so thank you for watching Just Outdoors again. And remember, stay informed.